Hi, this is Alex from Groovy Entertainment. Today we got another record to play for you. Today record, The Prince and the Proper from 1963. So let's get started. Once upon a time, when there was magic everywhere, There lived two boys, each of exactly the same age. One dwelt in the palace and was named Edward Tudor, the Prince of Wales. Lord Hertford? Yes, Your Highness? I'm thirsty. Fetch me a glass of water. Uh, yes, Your Highness. The other boy lived on the other side of London in a terrible slum. His name was Tom Canty. Well, did you get any money today, you little beggar? Well, only this one penny, Father. It was raining, you see, and... Give it to me, now! Tonight, you'll get no supper. Poor Tom could always escape from his harsh existence and his colorful dreams. My friend's Tom Canty. That's who I am. As you can plainly see by my suit of gold and the two dozen ruby rings on my fingers. Bow down. Everybody bow down to Prince Tom. I was just dreaming again. Just dreaming. One day, when Tom wandered through a part of London where he had never been before, he chanced to come upon Westminster Palace, where Edward, the Prince of Wales, dwelt. Now, there's a proper place for a prince to live. And if I were the prince, look, it's him. It's the prince himself. <laughs> through the bars of the huge iron gate, Tom stared into a courtyard where the Prince of Wales stood watching some lords and ladies arriving to visit the king. As poor Tom stared in wide-eyed wonder and excitement at the richly clad blue figure of the prince, he didn't notice that one of the royal guards was angrily addressing him. Get away from that gate, you beggar! Well, I'll teach you that when one of the king's soldiers gives an order, you obey it! Ow! Oh. How dare you strike a poor lad like that? Oh, begging your pardon, Highness, but this is a vagabond. Hold your tongue. Yes, Open the gate and let him in. Uh, you look tired and hungry, lad. You've been badly treated. Come with me. Servants all along the way snapped to attention as the two boys passed them. At last, when they had entered a rich apartment, the prince turned to one of the servants. Bring a portion of whatever food is being served the royal guests today. After the magnificent feast was set before Tom, the prince sent all of the servants away so that Tom would not be embarrassed by ignorance of table manners. And then, when Tom was so full he couldn't touch another bite, the prince sat down beside him. <laughs> Tell me, what is your name, lad? Tom Canty, your highness. It is an odd one. Now, where do you live? In the city, sir. Awful Court, out of Puddin Lane. Awful Court? Well, that's another odd one. Tell me, do you have a pleasant life there? Yes, except when I'm hungry, which is far too often. We have Punch and Judy shows, though, and, and monkeys and grand games. Games? Oh, I love games. We lads of Awful Court fight with cudgels, and we have mock tournaments. Well, that I would like, too. Tell me more. We have races to see who can run the fastest. Speak on. And in summer, we wade and swim in the river, and we duck each other and dive and shout and tumble. Oh, and... enough, enough. Say no more. Uh, to dress like you and just once play like that, I could forego being king someday. And, sir... If I could be dressed just once as you are in such fine clothes. Would you really like it, Tom? Oh, yes, I would. Then so shall it be. Take off those rags and put on the suit. But, sir... It will be but a brief happiness. And we'll change again before anyone sees us. 
Come on, hurry, lad. In a few moments, Edward, the Prince of Wales, and Tom Canty, the pauper boy, each had put on the other's clothing. Now the prince was dressed in rags, and poor Tom was resplendent in a suit of purple velvet and gold thread. The two boys stared at each other in surprise. Well, what do you make of this? Well, Your Highness, one of my low degrees should not even speak of it. Then I will say it. You have the same hair, the same eyes, almost the same voice and manner, the, the same form and stature, the, the same face that I bear. If it weren't for these clothes, no one could say which was you and which the Prince of Wales. It's true, sir. Yes, except for this, uh, this bruise on your hand. Was it caused by that guard who struck you at the gate? Yes, it was, Your Highness. It was shameful of him to strike you and cruel. Stay here a moment. I'll go and order him punished. The Prince, dressed in Tom's rags, picked up a certain article of national importance which had been lying on the table and hid it. Then he hurried from the room. But as he came into the courtyard, the same soldier mistook the prince for Tom. So, there you are, you beggar. Out you go. Take your hands off me. I'm the Prince of Wales. Oh, oh I salute your gracious highness. Now, be off, you crazy rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> so let me in. Let me in. I am the Prince of Wales. <laughs> was jeered and shoved away by the mob, Tom Canty, alone in the prince's apartment, turned this way and that as he admired himself in the mirror. Why, it's like one of my dreams. Except it's really happening. Tom Canty, Prince of Wales. <laughs> if my friends in awful court could only see me now. But where's the real Prince of Wales? He's been gone a very long time. own door. When they find me dressed as the prince, they'll take me to the tower and it'll be the end of me. <clears throat> Come in. Your father wishes you to visit him, your highness. My father? Is he here in the palace? Why, he's been ill on his bed for weeks, as you well know, highness. Highness? You, you call me highness? His majesty is most anxious to see you. But I... This lord believes that I'm the prince. What'll I do? If I reveal who I am, I'll be executed. And yet, how can I carry on this deception? Surely the king will know his own son. Uh, coming, your highness? Yes, yes, lead the way. Expecting at any moment to be challenged as an imposter, frightened Tom Canty followed Lord Hertford halls of Westminster until they came to a massive door watched over by the palace guards. Make way for the prince. As yet, no one had challenged Tom. Everyone believed him to be the real Prince of Wales. But now would come the test. As he was ushered into the huge bedchamber, he saw on the bed a large fat man with a stern expression. Tom's knees felt weak as he realized that he was in the presence of the monarch of England, the dreaded King Henry VIII. Why do you stare at me? Do you not know your own father? Your Majesty. Break not my old heart. Say you know me. Your Majesty, you are my dread lord, the king, whom God preserve. Ah, well said. Come closer. Why are you trembling, my son? Believe me, Your Majesty, I'm only a pauper. And it's by accident that I'm here. But I'm too young to die. Save me, I beg you. Do not talk of dying, sweet prince. You shall not die. Thank you for your mercy. Why should you have feared death? Kiss your loving father, my prince. Then be gone to your trifles and amusements. When Tom, disguised as the Prince of Wales, was shown out of the chamber, the king turned to Lord Hertford. 
No doubt the lad has been studying his Greek and Latin too much of late. See that he's given more time for games and sport. Yes, Your Majesty. Now, envy those decrees. I'll put my seal upon them. Uh, here they are, Majesty. But as for the great seal of state, I believe that when your health started to fail, you gave it to the prince for safekeeping. Did I? I'm so feeble these days that my memory plays traitor with me. Uh, I don't know. Uh, leave me, Hertford. Go fetch the seal. Lord Hertford left King Henry, who actually was very ill, and went to Tom, whom he believed to be the prince. Your Highness, the king gave you the great seal for safekeeping, but he desires it now. May I have it? The seal? I, I, I don't know. I don't remember. Oh, the king is right. The lad isn't the same today. What did you say, sir? Why, he even calls me sir. Uh, I, I was about to say that your father has decreed for you a round of games and pageants. He has? Hmm. Now I'm really beginning to feel like a prince. <laughs> So while pauper Tom Canty enjoyed all the pleasures of royalty and was bowed to and obeyed instantly, the real Prince of Wales, Edward Tudor, dressed in rags, wandered friendless and lost through the streets of London. Occasionally, he would stop passers-by and proclaim, I am Edward, Prince of Wales. Return me to the palace at once, I command you. Oh, dressed as I am, no one believes me. What should I do? Where shall I go? If Tom is mistaken for me, then I must be mistaken for him. Ah, oh, but surely his own mother will know that I am not her son. Awful court, he said, out of Pudding Lane. Well, perhaps there I'll find help. Well, what have you brought tonight? If it's only another penny, you'll get a whipping you'll never forget. Leave the boy be, John. Come here, son. I am not your son, good woman. I am Edward, Prince of Wales. <laughs> what kind of a trick is this? The boy is ill. His foolish reading of books has taken away his wits. Your son is well, madam. Take me to the palace where he is, and my father, the king, will restore him to you. Your father, the king? Oh, lad, it's merely another of your dreams. Enough of this. Where's the fruit of your begging on the streets today? How dare you lay a hand on me, sir? I'll see that you'll put an irons for it. Mind your tongue. Oh, now where's the money? I, I, I have nothing with me, nothing except these rags. But in the palace... Nothing, I... huh? I promised a whipping, and I keep my promises. Oh, you won't hang for that, sir. Oh. Suddenly, as the prince found himself near the door, Tom's mother opened it a trifle, and the prince slipped away from his attacker. Come back here, you filthy beggar! <laughs> Prince ran desperately through the deserted streets of London until he felt certain that Tom's father no longer pursued him. Then, exhausted and aching from his beating, he found outside a stable a pile of straw and slept upon it. For a week, Tom Canty thoroughly enjoyed pretending to be the Prince of Wales, and he had become quite clever at playing the role. But then, one day, Lord Hertford brought him sad news. Dear boy, your father, King Henry VIII, is dead. Oh, no. He was a fine man, and I was just beginning to love him. Just beginning to... Highness, I... I'm sure you realize what this means. It, it means that I've lost a good friend. It means that in you now bides the majesty of England. Your word is law. You are the king, and in three days you'll be crowned. You will be known as King Edward VI. King Edward? But it cannot be. It's not possible. Your Highness, even until a few moments before he died, your father maintained that he had given you the great seal for safekeeping. Now more than ever, it's important that we find it. Try to remember where you placed it. You've asked me every day for the past week. And my answer is still the same. I don't know. 
So, what does the Great Seal look like? After all these years, I'm sure you must know, Highness. I'm afraid that your memory is still as confused as a result of too much study and too little play. Uh, if you'll excuse me, I'll begin preparations for your father's funeral and for your coronation. Uh, you may leave. Thank you. Your Majesty. Your Majesty. Me? Tom Canty? King of England. Can this be another of my dreams? And I'll soon wake up to find myself in rags again and starving? But it's not a dream. I'm a prince now, a real prince. And if I can be a prince, why not a king? Why not? Yes, why not? I'll be king. Three days later, the real Prince of Wales, having wandered over half of London, found himself surrounded by a jeering, mocking crowd. I tell you, I am the real Prince of Wales. The man who will be crowned king is an imposter. I am the prince. As friendless as I be, with none to help me, I'll not say otherwise. At that moment, a tall, muscular stranger stepped out of the mob and went to the disguised prince's defense. Whether he's prince or not doesn't matter. He's proved himself a gallant lad to face the likes of you, and he's not friendless as long as Miles Hendon can use this sword. Now be gone, you pack of unmannerly curs. You have saved me, Miles Hendon, and I hereby reward you. Henceforth, you shall be known as Sir Miles Hendon. Well, I thank you. And what right do you have to make me a noble? The right of my sovereignty. Oh. Indeed. And what is your name, pray tell? I am Edward, Prince of Wales. Oh, that's the name you gave to that mob. But a friend deserves the truth. What is your name, lad? Will you dare to doubt me, sir? I... No, no. No, Your Majesty. Sir Miles? Uh, yes, Your Majesty. I command you to take me to Westminster Abbey. Uh, but Majesty, the king... Uh, <clears throat> well, that is... Yes, the king is being crowned there this very morning. He's an imposter. I am the king. And the fate of all England depends on whether or not we reach there in time to stop the coronation. In Westminster Abbey, which was filled with all the lords and ladies of the realm, and visiting kings and queens from abroad, Tom Canty, in a long robe of gold cloth, was conducted to the throne of England. His face was pale, and he was sick at heart, for he had come to realize that, while being a prince was the greatest adventure he ever could have hoped for, the crown meant more sacred responsibility than he could cope with. Filled with a steadily deepened remorse, Tom waited as the Archbishop of Canterbury raised the great crown above his head and was about to lower it. I hereby crown thee, King Stop! Ed... I forbid you to set the crown of England on that imposter's head. I am the king. What is the meaning of this sacrilege? Seize that beggar. Touch him not. He is the king. What was that? You are the, the king, your majesty. Now oh. try to bear up until after you've been crowned. I'm not ill, Hertford. I speak the truth. Look closely at him and at me. What a strange resemblance. They're almost identical. If it weren't for the difference of garments, it would be impossible to tell them apart. I command you to place the crown on its rightful head. Mine! But, 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 we, we, we must find some way to arrive at the truth. Some test, perhaps. Yes, that's it. A test. I have it. A question which only he who is the real Prince of Wales can answer. Tell us where lies the great seal of state. Ah, yes, very good idea. A good question, and one that I can't answer. Can this other, who is dressed in beggar's rags, answer? I was accustomed to keeping the great seal in a secret jewel closet. But that closet is empty. Where could I have put the seal? How could I have misplaced such a large golden disc? Well, it's obvious that this vagabond cannot answer. Seize him and... No, him. no, wait! Was this great seal round with letters and engravings on it? Yes, Tom. Well... If someone had described it to me weeks ago, I would have known what it was. I've been using it to... to crack nuts. Then you know where the seal is. Yes, but... but it was not I who put it there first. 
Who then? He that stands there, the rightful king of England. And he shall tell you where it lies. But I cannot remember. Then I'll spur your memory. Do you remember, after we had exchanged garments, do you notice that the soldier had hurt my hand? Look, the bruise is still here. Yes, yes. Well, what then? You vowed vengeance upon the soldier, and as you ran toward the door, you passed a table. Ah. That thing you called a seal lay on the table. You snatched it up, looked about for a place to hide it, and your eye caught sight of... Enough, enough. I shall always be grateful to you, Tom. You brought the memory of it back to me. The great seal is in the arm piece of the Milanese armor that hangs on the wall. Ah, the Milanese. Lord Hertford, go and fetch it from that place. He's right, Lord Hertford. And then all the world will know that he is the rightful king of England. <laughs> So, within a short time, when the Great Seal was brought to Westminster Abbey, Edward Tudor was crowned King of England. As for the pauper boy, Tom Canty was granted the honorable title of the King's Ward. And he and Miles Hendon, who had come to the young king's aid against the mob, were the favorites of the king throughout his reign. And that is how the Prince of England became a pauper, and the pauper a prince, many, many years ago. So that was The Prince and the Proper for 1963. So if you like, subscribe, share, and comment, and have a groovy day. We'll have another video coming out real soon.